Hey there, and welcome to this lesson. In our last lesson, you got really clear on where your point B was, your island of success, and how it looks in terms of those four key areas, artistic achievement, audience impact, creative living, and funding financials. Now, in this lesson, we're going to look over the different vehicles that can take you there. So, success, your idea of success is your destination. And now we're going to look at the vehicle that's going to get you there. There are so many more vehicles now than there used to be, even just a few years ago. Some you may be familiar with. Some are fairly traditional, but not out of date and some may be brand new to you. So after we review the options, I'm gonna get you to categorize those and see which ones are most appropriate for you and most in alignment with your driver, your inner why, and your destination. Let's dive on in. We're gonna take a walk through the different vehicles that are out there for artistic success right now. And they divide up into five main categories. The first is retail sales and exhibitions. Next, we have retail products, things like pillows, tote bags, coffee mugs, etc. Third would be nonprofit awards, exhibitions, and residencies. Fourth would be public art. And fifth is art education and expressive arts learning. So let's walk through these one by one and look at some of the different vehicles that are within each of these categories. So the first type of retail situation is directly between the artist and the consumer or collector. And the most obvious one is in your own gallery or studio. It could also be your own retail location participating in fairs or festivals, or selling on your own website. In addition, it could be commissioned work that you take directly from your client or, or customer. Next would be artist, consignment, consumer. That means that there's an intermediary between the artist and the consumer or client, and they're working on consignment basis you're all familiar with already. <coughs> Fiscal or online galleries, those are great examples of consignment agreement relationships where the artist consigns work to the gallery, the dealer takes usually 50% and the artist gets 50%. It's a consignment ar arrangement, not a wholesale one. Juried exhibitions and competitions are also usually consignment arrangements where the organization will take a small percentage and the artist will get the rest. Agents and consultants work on consignment as well, as do individual interior designers. Other retailers at times are also working on consignment. Another example of a consignment relationship would be crowdfunding. Sites like Kickstarter, GoFundMe, and a whole range of others that are now out there work on a consignment basis. The artist creates the proposed work and the crowdfunding site collects the money and then distributes it to the artist while retaining a percentage. It is not a wholesale relationship. It's a consignment agreement. So they're acting as the intermediary, very much like a fiscal or online gallery space. The difference is that the artist is able to create the proposal or project and then directly uh, work with and create an engaged audience on that other platform. So it has some similarities to a gallery arrangement and to working with an artist, a consultant, or an agent, but it really is its own separate, different venue. Then we have the artist wholesaler, retailer to consumer line, and that would be working with big organizations, big corporations, 
like interior designers, retail outlets that are both physical and online. These are a little bit more rare because there are not that many companies that want to go to the financial risk of purchasing artwork up front to then distribute to their clients. But these are occasionally out there and you could think about them as a possibility. When we're looking at the second category, retail product markets, they're really similar to the first. It's just that the products are things that are based off of your original art. Those products might be um, images that are printed onto mugs, tote bags, pillows, rugs, clothing, fabric, any other derivative project product of your original art. And those can be sold by you directly to the consumer if you are paying for the, their creation, either through your own gallery or studio, retail location, fairs, festivals, your own website. You can even take commissions for these types of works. Then you can also sell them by consignment in online marketplaces like Fine Art America, ImageKind, Zazzle. You can sell them through agents or consultants, via commissions, crowdfunding. There are many examples of artists using crowdfunding sites in order to create these derivative products for sale as rewards to get the funding to produce original art. Then we have interior designers working on commission with products that would particularly appeal to the interior design market, as well as other retailers. And similarly, we have artist to wholesaler to retailer to consumer relationships as well with bigger outlets. Now, these are can be very lucrative deals, and usually it is where the outlet itself the wholesaler is paying for the production of the product. You don't make as much directly, but the volume is much higher. So you're not making as much per product, but the volume can be much higher. So it can be a really lucrative um, outlet for your work. And it can be either through interior designers or through retail outlets like West Elm, um, Bed Bath & Beyond, World Market, outlets like that. Our third category is nonprofit awards, exhibitions, and residencies. Now in this section, you are creating artwork, but not necessarily selling the artwork. You can be direct to the viewer through your own exhibitions, either physical or online. And by this, I mean you can rent the physical space and host and run your own exhibition. You can create your own online exhibition and host it. It's usually project-based and it can be funded either via self-funding or through grants, awards, and fellowships. You can also create these sales and well, these exhibition opportunities through associations and nonprofits. If you enter and are accepted into group exhibitions, those again can be physical or online, and the association or nonprofit would be the one that would set that up. An example of that might be entering uh, an exhibition that is sponsored by your state or local arts council. That's a nonprofit group. And that exhibition would go up in a nonprofit, usually a nonprofit space, and the work usually is not for sale. But it gets you accolades, potential accolades, viewers, and followers. It's usually application-based, project-based, sometimes themed by medium, subject or style, and again can be funded via self-funding, grants, awards, or fellowships. This next one is one of my favorites. It's the idea of doing an artist residency. 
there are many artists who fund and finance their entire art career around residencies. Residencies usually are project-based and include, frequently include a solo or group exhibition, sometimes physical, sometimes online. They are almost always project-based, which means you pitch the idea for a project that you're going to complete during the residency period. It can be themed by medium, subject, or style, or it can be wide open. And these are usually funded by an actual residency award, and you can get additional funding through matching grants from other nonprofits. Public art is a category that so many people do not even consider, and it's one that I think is very, very much underutilized. I want you to think about it and think about how your work might fit into the public art category. Public art is usually um, run through an intermediary group that's either a public or private agency. So it is not something that is normally done directly between the artist and the viewer, unless it's created on the artist's own personal property. That has been done and maybe something you want to consider, but that's relatively unusual. It's most normally done through a public or private agency. It is application based. Usually, uh, the application comes from after a request for applications goes out. Those are called requests for proposals. They are almost always project based around a specific place and a, a specific need. And there can be also some themed requirements as well, depending on the project. There are three ways those can be funded. Via private individuals, whether it's the artist or him or herself, or a philanthropist who is funding the work for a public space, or a private space that's going to be available to the public, or it can be funded via a nonprofit agency. And that's usually collected through some sort of a percent for art program within an arts council or government agency or direct allocations from that government agency. The third avenue is via corporations. Most corporations have a line for public art. Most corporations support public art. Many have art collections. So it is uh, a, certainly a very viable avenue to go down and one that I want you to think about. Then we're talking about art education and expressive arts learning is our fifth category. So I don't want to separate out teaching from art making because teaching can be a very viable avenue to support your creative practice. And it can come in a variety of different forms that you may not have thought about before. Let's look at those for just a minute. It can be direct between the artist and the client, either in your own studio or retail space, on your website. It can take the form of classes, recurring classes that are occurring week after week after week and are ongoing. It can be workshops that are for a limited time period, whether it's one, two, three, or more days. And it can be courses that are for a limited time period, but go over a little bit longer space than a workshop. Courses usually have a more structured syllabus that's followed with a beginning, middle, and end. In addition, you might look at working through someone else to create those, those educational opportunities. It can be on somebody else's site or platform, somebody else's retail space. Usually it's still commission based. They handle the collection of funds and the publicity and you and take a smaller percentage, usually somewhere around 20%, and then you take the remaining 80%. And that can also go in the form of classes, workshops, 
or courses. Those can also be done through a public or private agency. For example, your local arts council, perhaps a continuing education program through a college or university, and they are fee-based, which means that you are paid by a set fee for X number of students in whatever class, workshop, or course it is. And in this case, the public agent or private agency is responsible for all of the space, the place, the collection of tuition, and the contact with the potential students, as well as the marketing of the teaching event. There are also some hybrids out there that don't really fit into any of those categories or fit only marginally into those categories. Things like patronage. The old patronage system where an artist received a stipend for ongoing work from a sponsor or a patron is still around and still alive. And it can come in the form of an individual who's an art patron who gives the artist that stipend and then has first dibs on all of the work that the artist creates. Or it can come in the form of an artist being paid via a site like Patreon. Patreon is a sort of twist on the old patronage system where you collect monthly stipends from a host of patrons. So it's kind of like crowdsourcing, crowdfunding meets the old patronage system. There are problems, pros and cons with Patreon. Patreon has changed some of its methodology in the last year. The way it works right now, um, I think it's just as advantageous to run something like that on your own website as it is through a platform like Patreon, but you might want to test it out and see how it works. So it is like crowdfunding, like Kickstarter, GoFundMe, in that you're creating a project or a proposal, and then people are supporting you monthly and have access to a certain number of rewards as a result. Another sort of hybrid form is pay what you want where artists put work out and people pay what they think they want to pay, can afford to pay, or what the work is worth. This can um, be a big disruptor. There are a number of artists who've done things like this. Um, Amanda Palmer is a really good example of that in the music world. You might want to look her up. The fourth one that I've got down here as a hybrid is subscriptions. And again, subscriptions is a format that ha has been around for a very, very long time. Think back to well-known artists like John James Audubon. Audubon worked on a subscription basis. He offered subscriptions to his print collections, like Birds of America, collected those subscriptions, and then went out and made the drawings, preliminary drawings, and the watercolors that became the final prints. He collected the subscriptions ahead of time, then had enough sets printed for each of the subscribers. That is a very viable model still and can take a number of different forms. So now I want you to think about which one feels like it's in alignment with you with your why and with your desired success. How is that vehicle going to get you from point A on the left to point B on the right? There's so many different ways to do it. So I want you to download this module's worksheet and go through that to identify the vehicles that are most appropriate for you. Dive on into that and then we'll move on to lesson three.